Hi folks, in this video lesson I'm going to show you how to play some simple mandolin chords for the Christmas hymn, What Child Is This? The melody is an old English folk song that's been around at least since the 1500s. The old original melody is called Green Sleeves. I've also created a premium download lesson that teaches the melody to this song two different ways. First as a waltz in 3-4 time, and then as a peppy little Irish jig in 6-8 time. If you'd like to learn to play the melody and learn about those time signatures, I suggest that you download that lesson. If you're all tuned up, print out the chord charts on the webpage and let's look at that first chord, the A minor. Okay, this is our first chord, the A minor chord, and it's a pretty simple little chord, just uses two fingers. We're going to have the index finger right here on the D string, second fret, and your third finger needs to come over to the G string at the fifth fret. The first and second strings are open, because they're automatically uh, notes of the A minor chord. Now you'll notice my second finger and my fourth finger may look like they're doing something, but they're, they're I just want them in a, in a relaxed position. I don't want them pulled way back here or sticking under there or anything weird like that. I just want them nice and relaxed, just barely off the strings. Now there are a lot of other ways to play an A minor chord, things like this. And you can uh, check out the other lessons on that. Uh, for this song, since it's a fairly slow song. I like to hear those open ringing chords as much as possible. And when you play those, all those closed position chords like this, the notes get choked off a little bit. Well, there I deliberately choked it, but you get a more open sound like this. So there's our A minor chord. The second chord we need is a G, so let's have a look at that one. Here's the second chord we need for the song. It's a G. Simple little chord, and it's been taught in uh, some of the early uh, free chord videos. So if you need a little help on that, go back and check those out. It's a basic little chord. I like it for this song because it's got two open strings and they really ring. You got your index finger here on the A string, second fret, and your second finger up here on this G note, third fret. I've got these fingers held out of the way so you can see a little better. When I'm actually playing, a lot of times these fingers are resting, just kind of hanging out there in midair above the strings like that so they're in a comfortable position. So there's our G. Next we have the F chord. Let me show you how to play that one. Now this is our F chord, and this one's going to involve three fingers and a little bit of stretching. You're going to have first finger up here on the first string, first fret. Second finger over here on the D string, third fret. Same note, they're both Fs. And then you have that same note we had in the A minor chord, fifth fret on the G string down on the bottom, and our A string is open. So you put all those three together and you get the F major chord. Now there are other ways to play an F major chord like this, and there's some, some ones up here. And check out the movable major and minor chords. Uh, download, which will show you some other ways. Again, like the other ones, I'm choosing this one because it's down low and, and has a nice ringing quality to it. The next chord in our tune is an E7 chord. Let me show you a simple way to play that one. Now this is our E7 and it looks like a fistful of fingers there, but I'm only playing uh, two different strings. I've got my index down here on the first fret G string, then the open third string, then I'm using my third finger to play the second fret of the A string, 
and an open E string on top. So there it is. You might be able to play it with your first and second finger. For me, that's a little more difficult. You might even use your little finger, which is a lot more difficult for me. I like first and third there. One last chord and we're ready to play the song. Here comes the C chord. Now that's our C chord. And if you look uh, right above it on the chord chart, you see the G chord looks almost identical. Here's the G chord. Just move those fingers over one string and you've got the C chord. Two open strings and two fretted strings. So when you get to the uh, middle of the song, you'll see that C chord appear. For this lesson, I have kept the chord shapes as simple as possible. There are other ways to form these same chords, and you might like to check out the premium download on movable major and minor chords to learn some of the other ways to play these chords. Next, let's talk a little bit about how to strum the chords in 3-4 time. What I'm doing here is a little waltz time or 3-4 time rhythm strum. And in 3-4 time, you're going to hear three beats per measure. So it'd be like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And there's a lot of different ways you can, you can play accompaniment chords with that kind of rhythm. But a very simple way is, is the way I like to do it is to sort of play the bass side strings, that'd be your, your G and your D string, on the first beat, and then play the treble side on the second and third beat. That way you can pick out which one of those beats is the first beat, because it sounds lower. One, two, three, one. Of course, you could strum all the way across them. It's a little more monotonous sounding. A one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm just going to go through uh, the first couple of chords like that and play it a few different ways for you. Two, three, one, two, three, G. See, I'm sneaking in a little upstroke like this. That's like one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one. One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. So just kind of play along with that and see what you think. If you look at the chord progression underneath the chord charts, you'll see I've got written A minor, A minor, G, G, F, F. Each one of those letters represents one measure. So each one of those letters gets three beats. Now with a little practice you should be able to play the entire song. I'll roll a track of the song and I'll play the chords so you can see and hear how to do it. One, two, three, one, two. I didn't give any explanation about the meaning of that number 7 on our E7 chord. Check out the premium download called Bar Chords and 7th Chords. 
which explains seventh chords in a lot more detail. That's it for this lesson. Practice those changes along with the video as many times as you need to until you're playing smoothly, and then grab the premium download and learn to pick out the melody. Keep your mind open, your mandolin in tune, and I'll see you next time.